died mid sunscreen application um i've been wearing and just finished up actually the sunplay rhodomentholatum really like this it has a little bluish tint to it um i ordered some dresses that i thought i would try on for you guys it came from abercrombie because i have some events coming up that i need some outfits for um so i thought i would try those on but i've been getting some questions about using kojic acid with retinoid so for example in the may love fade away brightening serum that i reviewed for you guys um, it has kojic acid in it <clears throat> and yes you can use the two ingredients together and they probably will exhibit some degree of synergy because the kojic acid it chelates copper in the active site of the enzyme tyrosinase that leads to pigment production plus the tretinoin likewise can inhibit tyrosinase and it increases epidermal cell turnover, ultimately helping to clear out some of the hyperpigmentation. And it also puts the brakes on inflammation because it is anti-inflammatory, even though it causes a lot of irritation in the beginning. So yeah, long story short, kojic acid can be combined with tretinoin, uh, provided you tolerate the combination, which is key. Likewise, if you are using other retinoids, the two can be used together. Like adapalene for acne would be a great combination actually, provided again, you tolerate the combination. Be a great combination if you're someone whose acne tends to heal with a hyperpigmentation. So you know, you're using some sort of hydrating kojic acid serum or moisturizer, apply it on and then apply tretinoin at nighttime. The order doesn't really matter that much. It all will likely depend too on the kojic acid product that you're using, how thick it is or how thin it is. But yeah, long story short, yes, you can use the two ingredients together. Likewise, you can also incorporate in azelaic acid, another skin lightening ingredient. It's anti-inflammatory, also helpful for acne and rosacea. So I've had my coffee and one of my light bulbs is out. I need to change it. That's why I came back in here because the lighting is better. Last weekend, I mentioned this top and these shorts and I said they were from Champion by C9 or whatever it's Under Armour <laughs> many of you caught that and you're like what all right first of all I got this cute green dress ignore my bra straps coming out it's not the right bra but isn't it cute it's kind of like I don't know sort of medieval flouncy has pockets and it's really comfy dark green color and this is how far it goes down in the back. It has like a stretchy back to it too. Although there's no zipper with this whatsoever. And so you have to put it on over your head as a word of warning. You won't get away with putting it on bottoms up because the band is too narrow. Uh, so probably the kind of thing you want to put on before, before getting your hair fixed. But yeah, it's really cute. So that's dress number one. This one I really like. It's super comfortable, very lightweight, flowy. Again, this is another one that you have to put on over your head. Um, at least I do. It's kind of got a little bit of a, it's all in the skirt. Isn't that cute? It'd be very good for dancing. It has these like really, fluttery flowy sleeves really comfy still hot here so this is perfect and I love the green color alrighty so this is basically the same dress but a different pattern um, really good for fall but still 
super lightweight for the 90 plus degree heat. It's got a good swish to it. I actually think that this bra that I have on underneath ends up working out just well because it's a bit, you know, low, low for my comfort level. Um, so yeah, loving these. Glad I got two. It's good for salsa. <laughs> and this is good, I don't know, football colorage, Austin, new tee. And I also got this little shirt dress and I'm glad I sized up a bit because it's a little on the short side um, and I like it a little, have a, having a little bit more room in the arms and whatnot. Like if it's too, these kinds of things are too fitted, I find that they're very restrictive. So yeah, I don't know. I think it'll look cute with some heels or maybe some boots. These boots were made for walking. I need to steam it in the back, but another good fall color. So temperature's cooled off a little bit. So I'm headed out for a walk just in this neighborhood. I was hoping some people would have their Halloween decorations out, but this neighborhood usually goes all out with the decorations. Like one of the houses they do where they hang like little witches' hats from the trees. It's really cool to see. I try and get out and go for a walk a couple of times a week just because I think it's good for your mental health to be in the outdoors, fresh air, <laughs> in whatever way you you can squeeze in. And now that the temperatures are cooling down a bit, somebody's practicing the drums in the background. Can you guys hear that? I wonder if it's copyright protected. <laughs> Check it out. This house has like a little mini scene. Can you guys make that out? I don't wanna go up close. It's got a tent, a barn, a windmill. There's like a bird house there. I guess it's like a playground town for squirrels. There's even a church. <laughs> How cute. So I came over here to CVS because as you'll recall, what was it, two weekends ago? No, maybe it was last weekend. I thought I purchased a nail polish and absentmindedly left it behind in the cart and never even got it and put it you know, through the checkout. Anyway, so I'm here at CVS to check out the nail polish because I want to paint my toenails to go with my dress, you know, some kind of fallish color to go with those dresses. So let's see what they have. Hopefully they have some So nice Different color. has come out with an acne spray, 2% salicylic acid. This is a great option for hard to reach areas like your back. I was really excited to see this when they announced it over on their Instagram. They also have a salicylic acid body wash. Looks like it's gonna be creamy and moisturizing. Um, that's a, a competitive alternative with the typical Neutrogena oil-free acne body wash. And then they also have a body scrub with 2% salicylic acid. Hmm. These little beads, they're pretty gentle typically. So they had to reformulate their dark spot corrector since the FDA cracked down on the over-the-counter use of hydroquinone. This used to have hydroquinone in it, but now it's basically a niacinamide serum. It has um, sea buckthorn oil. That I rather enjoy personally in skincare products because it has um, just a nice texture to it, but it's rich in antioxidants. Unfortunately, oops, unfortunately this has fragrance in it. So I don't know, I think that is not necessary. It can be irritating. And when we're talking about a product somebody is choosing in the hopes of treating their dark spots, which niacinamide definitely can help with dark spots as well as acne. You don't want to increase their risk of irritation with fragrance, so I'm not sure why they did that. I feel like there's been a real silence in the drugstore sunscreen newbies game. Like, I don't know, As, ever since Usering came out with all of their new sunscre newer sunscreens, I haven't seen many new sunscreens from other typical drugstore brands. This looks like a CVS dupe for Neutrogena's uh, clear face, a chemical sunscreen, which I rather like. 
can sting around the eyes a bit, however. Now that I have you guys in here, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that. So I reviewed for you all the um, Elastin Tinted Sunscreen, the Hydro Tint. And I've got to say, this Sun Balm, competitive with that. I, I actually think this is much better than the Elastin Hydro Tint. Now it has more of a buttery, almost whipped consistency, but the tint is not as or is not orangey like the Elastin one, and this one doesn't pill. And this one is a lot less expensive. $19.79. I think that's less expensive. I'm not sure actually on a per ounce basis. Seems like it's less expensive. Yeah, I haven't seen anything really too new from Copper Tone. I mean, they basically just come up with new labels for their products. I rather enjoy this pure and simple line. It's good. It does leave a cast, but it's a great option for around the eyes. Recently, I was reminiscing with you guys about the Aussie Mega shampoo. Looks like they have a kid's line now for curly hair. Hmm, I'm not seeing the color that I had, but I kind of like this grazy white. Seems like it would be a good nail color. This one's pretty too. What's it called? This is the one I think I had actually from Kroger, that I had in my cart from Kroger. Topless Beach. It's really very subtly different. Topless Beach and Berlin there. I'm sure they look notably different when they're actually on the nail and dry, but in the bottle they look practically identical. I did in fact purchase the nail polish and I didn't even realize it. I got the topless beach, <clears throat> but it matches my sweatshirt. Uh, it's pretty, huh? So I think I'm gonna do my fingers and my toenails with that. I say that, but hopefully I'll make enough time to actually do my nails. Takes time. But it's been a while since I have done my nails. I like to give it a break, give it a rest keep the nail plate hydrated. While I was in CVS, I noticed they had a CVS brand hand cream that had lactic acid and urea in it. It was kind of like a generic version of, I think, the Eucerin hand cream. Pretty inexpensive, and that would be a great option for the upcoming winter. You know, urea is really good for the moisture barrier. It's also good for your nails. And um, so, yeah, I thought I would mention that since I was in there getting nail polish. I also had my eye peeled for that Fanta Mystery flavor because <laughs> I tried it out a few vlogs ago. Because I, if you missed that vlog, I am always lured into mystery flavors of things that I would otherwise like not care about. I'm not a big soda drinker, but they had this Mystery Zero Sugar Fanta, and I tried it out a few vlogs ago. And in my opinion, it tasted like creamsicle. But I was kind of curious if I could find it again and retest it, like if they have different mystery flavors sneaking around because I saw a comment from one of you guys that you tried it and you said it tasted like something entirely different. I found that it tasted like creamsicle. So I'm wondering if the mystery flavor is the same in all the bottles or if they Well, hey guys, I just got out of the shower. I did the same moisturizing routine that I showed you in last night's with a surplus of serums. And by surplus of serums, my philosophy is Less is more in terms of the number of products, but I'm currently making my way through these Timeless Serums and I'm incorporating them along with the May Love Fade Away at nighttime. One, two, plus moisturizer. <laughs> As I throw it out the window. Three, um, and that's been working out well for me as a way to go through these, but to reiterate what I said last night, you don't need to use all of these products. I'm just layering them this way to, you know, make my way through them and it's working out well. Check out yesterday's vlog towards the end. I go over like how I do that and all that. Anyways, my face is clean, hydrated, moisturized. Make sure you don't store your razors in the shower because if you do that, what will happen is, first of all, the blades will dull a lot faster and that makes you more at risk for nicks as well as ingrown hairs and little skin infections. The dull razor doesn't cut as well, and so you end up pressing harder, and that firm pressure, that's what also leads to razor burn. Plus, the other thing I was gonna tell you guys, 
Um, when it comes to shaving, don't dry shave. The hair is much more amenable to shaving when it's hydrated up from water. So don't just go in and dry shave. Dry shaving with a dull razor that you've left um, in the shower is not a good look. Uh, recipe for irritation with shaving. You know, when it comes to body hair, I feel like there's a lot of pressure on women. They put it on themselves, I think, um, to remove like all types of body hair except for the hair on your head. And wait for it there'll probably be an eyebrow trend in the next couple of months where people are taking their eyebrows off because eyebrow trends they're all over the place um you know here and there and everywhere just ignore eyebrow trends and you'll be you'll thank me later but um anyways yeah um there's a huge pressure i think women put on themselves to remove body hair and if it's causing you a lot of irritation especially under the arms or in the bikini area like, you don't have to remove body hair. Let it grow out, you know, who cares what people think? Uh, especially if you get a lot of irritation under the arms, you know, people are like, why, why do we have body hair there? It actually reduces friction um, to have underarm hair. I know it's not socially acceptable, but you know, we're going into the fall and winter months now, you're not gonna be wearing tank tops all the time. So let it grow. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you want to, you know, it, it might help you if you deal with a lot of irritation. Anyways, you guys, I'm going to wrap this vlog up here. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for coming along with me this weekend. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.